Today, you're gonna discover the number one cause of unhappy marriages. Now, I would say over 80% of marriages and relationships fail due to this one core reason. And unfortunately, a lot of men and women think it's their inability to communicate, but I'm gonna show you that's only the surface level cause and that your inability to find the deeper core reason for the lack of communication is the direct result of why your relationship or marriage will fail. After you discover this core cause that's not meeting your wife's need, I'm gonna teach you three communication skills you must use starting today to improve the level of communication with your wife or girlfriend, meet that core need, and make you guys closer than ever before. Now, if you clicked on this video, you probably think that this is an issue, but let's go over the core signs and symptoms, four type symptoms that prove that you're not meeting your wife's or girlfriend's need around this domain. Number one, most conversations turn into bickering and fighting seemingly out of nowhere. Number two, she goes back and forth whether she wants to be with you or not. And this makes you feel really confused because one day she wants to date you, she seems happy, and then all of a sudden she's questioning the relationship long-term the next day. Number three, she lies to you about the smallest of things. And number four, she gets mad at you for trying to solve her problems instead of understand her deeply when she has those problems. Now this core need is what I call unassailable assistance. Now if you fail to meet this need over time, your wife or girlfriend starts to get cold, unloving, she stops giving affection toward you, you guys stop having sex, and ultimately she becomes more bitter and closed off than she used to be. And this is because there's two main components you're not meeting. The first is her psychological safety, and the second is her emotional safety. Now overall, when you don't meet this need, the woman's lack of feeling safe with you in the relationship is why most women will leave men. Safety is a core need women have. If they don't feel safe with the partner they're with, they're gonna go seek that safety in other domains. Now sometimes it's through friends, sometimes it's through movies and dramas, but other times it's for another guy. What's happened over time with all these conflicts and communications where you didn't meet the unassailable assistance, she started to develop the belief that she cannot feel safe around you, that you cannot meet her needs. And so she has to look outside of the relationship. Let me give a recent example of one of my clients in the Marriage Mastery Program. On our first call together, he started to tell me that over the years after their second child, his wife would complain that he wasn't around enough and that when he was around, he had his friends over all the time and she could not have enough alone time with him. And he told her, I'm going to work all the time. I'm providing for the family. I need my time with my friends. Now, he's actually right. It's good to have a balanced life. And a lot of men actually put themselves too much into the relationship and bend over backwards for their wife. However, he had the right intention with the wrong approach. And these three skills I'm about to teach you is gonna give you the right approach to make your wife feel understood and resolve that conflict instead of what happened to this guy, which is over the years of them bickering and fighting, of him wanting his needs to be met and her wanting her needs of attention and love, how it only pushed them further apart. Now, men and women have more commonalities and differences, but one of the key differences that creates conflict with you two is how we communicate and our basic need for the communication. Now, with the word unassailable assistance, a simpler word and need for that is connection. Women's core need is the safety, but the other is connection. And they need to feel connected to the person they're with. Now, the way women seek connection is through dialogue and didactic conversation. Basically, what this means is that when she feels a negative emotion or positive, but sometimes negative, oftentimes as a man, our core need is for status to seek peace and challenge. That's the masculine nature. And what happens over time is that whenever she comes to you with a problem, if your mode is to solve it and hers is for connection, you trying to solve her problem makes her feel disconnected, like she cannot have her problem. It's not okay to feel that way. And whenever he was arguing with his wife saying, well, I should have my friends, I should do this, he was essentially saying to her behind those words on the lower level, in that lower layer, you cannot feel this way, it is not okay. That made her feel disconnected over years and years and years until she wanted a divorce. Now, before we go into these three key skills you must have to make your wife feel close, to meet that unassailable assistance for psychological safety, I wanna let you know that the first step I do with every guy I speak with is the soul forgiveness exercise. What this is designed to do is to release all resentment you have towards your wife for all the betrayals and fighting. Because here's the thing, let's say teaching you these skills is giving you the materials and the blueprint to build this house of the relationship that you want. However, if you have any harboring resentment or anger toward your wife, what's gonna happen is that the foundation is gonna be faulty. And if you spend all this time and energy focusing on new skills to develop this house with a faulty foundation, in those conversations, even if you use those skills with the right words, she will feel that resentment and be intuitive enough to know that it's not coming from a genuine place. And no matter what you say to her, it's only gonna push her further away. So if you need help understanding this forgiveness exercise yourself, I have a guided program helping men 
guide them through that forgiveness exercise. What you can do is click the link down below, set up a free call with me or my marriage evaluator. On that call, we'll hear your situation with your wife or girlfriend. We'll tell you exactly how to release that resentment and a game plan through my ERM method to move forward how to regain reconciliation with your wife or girlfriend, okay? Now let's go into these three skills. All right, the first key skill you need is emotional versus cognitive empathy. Now the one you want is cognitive. Now here's the distinction. Empathy is broken down into the idea that you understand your partner, where you're feeling what they're feeling. However, Paul Bloom wrote a book right here, as you can see, on empathy, and he distinguishes two types of empathy. Now, emotional empathy is the empathy that most people convey in relationships that actually makes things worse. Another term for this is state transference. Essentially, when your wife is arguing with you about something or she gets upset, as a man, if you start to feel the emotions she's feeling, the anxiety, the anger, and you respond in kind, then you are using emotional empathy. And it actually makes things worse because you go into your flight or flight type of brain. This is when you panic. This is when you use all the negative skills of communication that only has things fall apart. However, cognitive empathy is what you want to develop as a skill. Now, this is something I developed as a therapist and it takes practice and time. For example, when I worked with my first client who was self-harming, when he shared his story of ideation of ending himself, I felt that intense pain and I walked around for a week just feeling heavy. It's almost like it just, his emotion just came into my, it just infected me right? And I didn't have a shield and barrier. And I thought you need to have that in order to understand your partner, but that's not true. Studies actually show through his book that it is far more effective as a therapist and as someone who's listening and resolving communication conflict to have this cognitive empathy. This means when your wife comes to you and she has a problem and she's feeling anxious or stressed out, you can reflect that she's feeling that way without feeling her emotions. The way you do this is through a very simple statement. So let's say your wife comes to you and she's pissed off at work. Her boss is treating her disrespectfully. She's getting angry and then she starts to kind of take it out on you and you feel personally attacked, which we'll go into here, by the way, how to overcome that. Now, using emotional empathy, what that would look like is you start to try to solve her problems. You're feeling her anxiety and from that place, you're operating from a place of anxiety and it only amplifies this anxiety monster between the two of you and nothing gets resolved. However, using cognitive empathy would be something like this. You feel, insert her emotion because of this reason. So you would say you feel frustrated, you feel angry, you feel disrespected, whatever she's feeling, you convey that to her and the content's right there. And what this does is it makes her feel understood. When she feels understood, it helps her calm down, become more rational, and the problem gets resolved and she gets that connection she needs from you. Now the second skill you must master in order to be connected with your wife or girlfriend is posture of curiosity. Now I'll tell you through another story. I was working with a client the other day and his wife has a tendency to, when they get in fights, she's the one that leaves. In most relationships, one person is the fleer, one person is the pursuer. Now his wife was the fleer. Every time things got too much for her, she would need a break, she would go off and she would go for a drive or not text him for a while and she needed to calm down. Now most often he assumed he didn't have a posture of curiosity. He made assumptions that she was leaving because he couldn't help her, that he wasn't good enough to fix her problem. And I know most men feel that way when their wife or girlfriend is upset, that I can't make her feel better, it's about me. Instead, I told him to take a posture of curiosity instead. So when she came back, he asked her, what is it that you're searching for when you go to leave? What can I do better to help you out in those moments? He asked questions about the situation instead of making assumptions, because when you make assumptions, it's filtering through your own insecurities and it's only serving to amplify that problem. However, if you take yourself out of the equation and you ask questions and you're genuinely curious about why she is doing what she is doing and you ask questions from that place, it shows compassion, it increases the empathy in the right way and it makes her feel understood even more. Now, the third and final skill is to create your container. I would say this is the most important one and it kind of circles back to this emotional empathy. And let me tell you through another story, actually. I remember when I was in graduate school and we're learning couples therapy and also the paradigm of group therapy. We were sitting there and when someone in the group would feel upset or cry as the emotions always came out in the group therapy process, one person in the group would put their hand on the other person and say, hey, it's okay, don't worry. It's okay, you don't have to feel this way. It's all right. Now on the surface, that seems like a good, compassionate thing to do, right? It's not. My mentor pointed out to us, that oftentimes when that person was feeling upset, that the action of making them feel okay, say, don't worry, it's all right, don't do that. Actually, that was selfish of the person doing that because they didn't like experiencing that emotion. They couldn't sit with the other person's sadness or pain or jealousy or envy or whatever that deep underlying emotion was, it felt uncomfortable. So they tried to make them feel better to make themselves feel better. When in fact, the best thing you can do when your wife or girlfriend or anyone in your life is feeling a negative emotion is allow them to experience it, give them acceptance 
around that emotion. Tell them it's okay. Allow them to go deeper into the pain. And you can only do that when you create your own container of allowing yourself to feel your own emotions. I would say the majority of men that fail in marriages, this is the most important skill, is to be able to sit with your own deep emotions and develop this bulletproof emotional mindset around other people's emotions where you're not affected, where you can have this empathy and not that one. And what that does is that when your wife has her issues and her problems, you were there for her. You create the container like so. Imagine that this is you. You create this container. The blue is her. She has all these wild emotions and you can sit there and let her have them and you can contain them. You don't have to force and close her off and try to control her, but you're not weak where she doesn't feel safe. And sitting there and allowing her to have those emotions, asking her the right questions and responding to her from a cognitive empathetic place that makes her feel understood, psychologically, emotionally safe and gives her that unassailable assistance. Again, if you need support developing these skills to improve your marriage or your relationship, click the link down below. Smash the like button and press subscribe for more videos every single week. See you in the next one.